All right, I'm making this video uh, for my boy Paul and my boy Chris, but uh, this could be used for anybody that has a uh, custom arcade that, that you got from Centerpiece Arcades. So I'm gonna kind of do the same thing that I would do if you were here locally and kind of show you how to use your machine. Okay, I'm gonna try to talk a little fast. Forgive me, I'm a little sick, so I'm losing my voice. But we have a power button on the back. Uh, it's the only button back there, it looks like a button. So step one is you're just gonna hit that button. You'll see your lights light up because the LEDs are uh, wired into your computer's power supply. So that's how you know that your computer is on. You have a remote up here. Now this is a smart TV. I'm not a smart TV expert, okay? But you can do all types of things with this. Um, but you do need to turn your screen on. So that's all you need to do with that, turn your screen on. It is hooked up to a power surge inside the cabinet. I would still recommend hooking it up to a power surge on the outside of the cabinet because when you're done, we're going to shut this off like you would shut off windows and then your computer will still be running in your TV. So you can just go back and hit that and it'll turn everything off for you. So hit the power button, watch your lights come on, hit your remote and it will boot into hyperspin. You will see windows for about 10 seconds. Just let it run and let it do its thing. So think about the control panel like a normal arcade game okay we have player one player two player four and player three now all the buttons kind of correspond with each other we have player one start and the buttons beside the start buttons are coins so player one start player one coin player two start player two coin player four and player three coin then we have these buttons here in the middle I call them command buttons so the tab the start and the pause these three buttons are literally only going to be used inside of an arcade game. This will pause only arcade games. Nintendo and Sega would pause with the start button. Um, this is a tab. Same thing as hitting tab on your keyboard. It's going to bring up a configuration menu inside of MAME, which is for arcade games only. And that's how you could change buttons around. And then this start button is actually enter, but we don't have an enter sticker. So this button is literally made for this tab button. You're only going to use this when we have that configuration menu, which I'll set up, uh, I'll show you guys in a second. Now, these three buttons are the main three buttons we're going to use, and uh, predominantly we're going to use our player one start. Player one start is the main command button across the entire arcade, okay? So this will exit all of your arcade games, this will coin your player one games, as well as back you out of a wheel, which I will show you in a minute, and this will start a game, and it will also enter into a wheel. So if you wanted to get into the Nintendo wheel, it will enter into that for you. We have this joystick. It is doubled up and coupled with the Player One joystick. I just had this set as a, there's a four-way harness, so it's blocking the X directions. So you could use this for Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, stuff like that. Now these are mouse buttons. This doubles up as a trackball and a mouse. We have our spinner. You can pop that off right there. It's kind of on there tight. Pop it off and pop your steering wheel on. And this button here, button 5, is going to be your favorites button um, when you want to set favorites on a wheel. And we have our pinball buttons on the sides. This is a shooter button, this is your flipper, and that's your nudge. And those are going to be universal across all the pinballs. You also have this is a pinball, that's a flipper, and then the two outside buttons on player 1 and player 2. So player 1, button 1, and player 2, plunger. Uh, well, the plunger is the joystick, you hold it back. But a flipper would be player one, button one, and player one, button three. Okay, so let's get into some gameplay and I'll show you what's going on. So, um, when we're inside of our main wheel, I'm going to navigate the wheel real quick and then we're going to go into some of the games. So you're going to see these things called uh, banners. They pop up really fast. You can't slow it down. This is just to help you navigate the wheel. So everything under the arcade banner is an arcade game until we get to the next banner. So let me just kind of show you. If you go to play that, you just press start and you'll notice you can't. It's a banner, okay? So everything under that banner is an arcade game. Arcade, all these are arcade makers and some arcade systems. And then we come to the next banner. We have a pinball banner, okay? So everything in between pinball and arcade is an arcade game. Everything under pinball is pinball. Pinball, 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 pinball. And then we have a console banner. Everything under the consoles, you guessed it, it's a console. 
And then we're going to go down to handheld. Everything under handheld is handheld. And then we're going to come right back around to the main wheel. Okay? All right, so that's how we navigate the wheel. Now, main, this is the main emulator. All the arcade games are actually in this one wheel, and all the rest of them are duplicates. But they just help navigate and help jog your memory. So you have SNK, Capcom, Made Street Fighter, and a bunch of other stuff. But they're technically all inside of main. So when you want to get into a wheel, press player one start. Now there's going to be a two or three second lag. Notice I can't move. Just wait till everything's moving and then you can move. It has nothing to do with your system. It's Windows and it cannot be updated. Okay, so we're inside of our wheel. There's 8,000 games in this one wheel. You can hold your joystick down and fly through the wheel this way. You can hold your joystick to the right or the left, pick a letter. Your main function button will be player one start. Okay, that will take me to the E's. So that's how you can navigate through your wheel. Player one button five is a favorites button. You can add a favorite, again, main button, player one start. I can add or remove, or I can go to my favorites. Okay, so now I'm in my favorites. When I want to play a game, again, I wait till everything's moving, press player one start, give it a second. Remember, this is these are keyboard controls on your keyboard. So if you're just button mashing, you're gonna have things freeze up and stuff like that. So once you're inside of an arcade game, you can pause it and go into my tab menu. Remember, this start button is only made for this one menu. This is the control button inside here. So we have input general, input general, player one controls. These are all the controls for all of main. If you change it here, that's the, this would change every game. You also have, this is where you would set up trackball, light guns, and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into that. I have another video that's, uh, just for this one tutorial. But input this is just this one game. Notice we have a smaller menu. So this tells us what this game is using. Up, down, left, right, button one, and button two. So if I want to make a change, just press start. Those arrows pop up, and now the next button I touch becomes that button. We want that to be up. Now if you make a mistake, not to worry, but main will let you do multiple controls. Take your keyboard out and press delete, and you'll notice the none button will pop up. We just start over, okay? So I'm showing you this because if you play games like Marble Madness, you may notice it's set up for the trackball. It should be set up for, uh, I mean, the joystick, it should be set up for the trackball. Or if you're playing something like Robotron that's unique and it had two controls, main can't recognize that. If it's a normal game, uh, the controls are already set for you. Okay, so pause, unpause, go inside here, give it some coins, press start. Okay, and now I'm off and running and ready to play. Okay, when you want to get out of the game, just hit exit, and it will take you right back to where you were before. I'm still in my favorites wheel. When I want to get out of a wheel, press the coin button, player one coin. Okay, so player one start gets you into a wheel, player one coin gets you out of a wheel. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into any more games, so I don't wanna make this video too long, but this is that's how you get in a game, get out a game, exit a game, pause a game, and make a change in a game. So I'm gonna go down to the pinballs. I'm gonna show you Pinball FX3 because it's the only exception to all the rules. We don't have a script written in here to go into the game itself. So just pick any game, and you're gonna have to manually pick the table that you want when you get in here. Now remember, this is our plunger, as well as this button here. Player one, button one, and player two, button three are our flippers, as well as perfectly right here, you can rest your palms on both sides and play like a normal pinball. Okay, just hit enter. This is our mouse button. Now when you're playing Pinball FX2, you don't need to do any of this. It will go right into your game for you. So you can pick any game you want. Now if you notice these two white arrows, there's actually more games than some of these. Okay. Single player. You can only do single players on Pinball FX2 and 3. It'll give you a tour of the table, or you can hit a pinball button and end the tour. Okay, hold your hold your flipper back, or I could press this button over here. And these tables are just amazing. Okay, so that's our pinball games. When you want to exit, hit exit.
This is the only one you have to walk out like a computer. Actually, it's a single player. Hit the arrow in the top hand corner up here. That's how you pick another table and that's how you exit your game. Okay? Now, if you tap again, it'll take you right back to where you were. Hit my coin button and it backs me out of that wheel. Now, if you go into Pinball FX2, you don't need to do that. You can go in here and just pick a wheel. I'll do it. Pick a table and it will, there's a script written. It will automatically go right into the table for you and then hit exit and it'll exit right out to the wheel. Pinball FX3 is just new. We don't have a script written for that yet. Now, when you're playing visual pinball, this is like an arcade game. Okay, so you're gonna go in here, pick a table, you're gonna give it some coins. You can play multiple players, which is pretty cool. Notice it's taking some time. Give it a second, let it do its thing. You can't really speed that process up. Okay, so I have my table, give it some coins. I'm gonna have multiple windows up, uh, multiple scoreboards. The more times I press start, the more people can play. One, two, three, see, one, two, three, and the controls are the same. Okay, exit. Okay, so now we know how to get into all of our games. We know how to exit our games. We know the unique of Pinball FX3. I won't go into Nintendo. They all play the same. Just remember, when you're playing an arcade game, your controls will always be in order. Button one, button two, button three, four, five, and six. Okay, when you're playing a Nintendo game or Super Nintendo game, you just gotta figure out what the buttons are. There's only six, right? So Nintendo had an A and a B. Coincidentally, it's A and B. Okay, but I'll never have controls mixed with other controls. Player one will always be here. Start and select will always be on the player one side. Player two start and select will always be on the player two side. Now, if I wanna get out of the whole system, press the coin button, do you wanna exit? Again, main command button is the start button. And you notice we're running Windows, Windows 10. This is fully activated. If you need me to log on to your machine, I don't know where it's at. Um, if you need me to log on to your machine, there'll be a white internet stick. You'll plug it into the USB port, which is located right under your control panel. Kind of hard to see, but just log on like a normal Wi-Fi. Just go down here and pick your Wi-Fi. If you ever need me to log on, you're gonna use AnyDesk. I'll put it right there in the middle of the screen for you. Okay, you're just gonna double click on there and give me the ID and I can log on and help change buttons for you. If a program needs to be fixed, it'll have to be the guy that made the drives. If you ever wanna get back into Hyperspin, just double click on Hyperspin and it will log you right in. When you wanna shut down, we're gonna shut this down the normal way, like a normal PC, okay? Now, if your screen, back up a little, if your screen ever has this, I call it the white screen of death. The only thing you can do is, sorry about the mess in this one, we are still building it, but I wanted to show you because we, uh, it doesn't like to stay in display mode for longer than 6 to 12 hours. You just have to control all delete, it sucks, but, okay, and then you just go back into hyperspin. That's only if you let it run overnight or something like that. It will load right back into hyperspin, okay? All right, so that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, comment, uh, shoot me an email, shoot me a text. And I'll go ahead and show this bad boy now. Happy gaming, everyone. <laughs>